In Britain, there is a long history of useful witchcraft dating back to the Middle Ages. Known as the cunning folk, these witches would cast spells to heal the sick or bring good luck. Research has shown that Gerald essentially used these spells in his own New Forest rituals. But it was his ambition that set Gerald apart from the cunning folk of old. For him, these English folklore spells held much greater power. Gerald had ambitions to use magic on a much grander scale that would change not just your health, but the entire world. He was about to test his newfound magical powers against something truly dangerous. As just across the sea, Hitler began to threaten invasion. When he wasn't casting spells, Gerald was also a prominent member of the local home guard. And so, it made sense to Gerald to prepare to repel the Nazis, not just with rusty bayonets, but with magic. And on one night in 1940, that's exactly what he and his coven are said to have done. We were taken at night to a place in the forest where the great circle was erected. I've come to the depths of the New Forest in search of the exact location of this famous magical encounter. And here to talk me through it is Gerald's biographer, Philip Heselton. Yes, hello, Ronald. Glad you found it all right. We're here because Gerald Gardner said we were taken at night to a place in the forest, and there we created the largest cone of power that we had ever attempted. What's a cone of power? Well, it's not a physical cone. It is something magical, something... a thought form, if you like. This was to be directed towards the... high command of the, the German army and, indeed, to Hitler himself. For Gerald, the threat of German invasion was the perfect opportunity to demonstrate the true power of Wiccan magic. And the great cone of power was raised and slowly directed in the general direction of Hitler. They built up power, dancing quickly round. And then when that power had reached its climax, there was this cone of power which could be seen by those who were sensitive to these things. The command was given. You cannot cross the sea. You cannot cross the sea. They rushed towards the fire, at the same time raising this cone of power and sending it over to the German high command and indeed to Hitler himself. I have to confess, although the night isn't particularly cold, I'm shivering a bit here. I got wet feet. It's pretty uncomfortable. Would it have been similarly physically exhausting for them? Well, it, yes, because they weren't in the first flush of youth, most of them. It was something which exerted them. It exerted them greatly. And Gardner says several of them died shortly after that ritual. You cannot cross the sea. You cannot come. You cannot come. This was, the, if you like, the life force of the individuals coming out. This was important to them. And they were prepared to sacrifice themselves, if necessary, in order to achieve this objective. This wasn't just doing it for fun. These were people you know, they, they were too old to join up, and all right, Gardner was in the Home Guard, but they felt they wanted to do something. And so they used the skills that they believed that they had, which were the magical ones. And so, I say, it would be surprising if they hadn't done it. And we know of various other groups throughout the country that were doing similar sort of things. Now, from the perspective of the present day, this story might seem utterly preposterous. Witches effectively sacrificing their lives in order to create a spell to ward off the Nazis. But Hitler didn't come, and even the British government seemed to feel threatened by the power of magic. <laughs> 